Welcome back to Pursuit of Passion. I'm Chef Jamie Vincent Bordenero, and I'm here to teach you different recipes, tips, and techniques to give you the skills to cook memorable meals for you and your loved ones. On today's episode, we have a vegetarian treat. That's right, it's butternut squash bisque. And alongside with it, what's a soup that will warm you up without a grilled cheese. This one's a gourmet grilled cheese with some triple cream brie from France and Hilltop Aviaries honey in the middle for a little sweetness. Let's get started with our squash. Very simply cut off the root end of the squash. Go around back to make the cut, the next cut a little easier and cut off that bulbous end. And now we're going to make a cut directly down the middle and then we'll be able to scoop out the seeds. So be very careful, again safety first, and we're going to make sure we go all the way down so that the tip hits the cutting board and that will allow us to have the proper leverage to cut evenly down the middle of our squash. Just make a few strokes using your guide hand to keep the squash sturdy until you get all the way through. And you'll see the seeds in the middle. That's the part we're going to scoop out. Just simply take a large spoon go inside the cavity and around the seeds to get out all of the fibrous parts as well as the seeds. Just like that. Repeat with the other half. And now we're ready to roast. So for this soup to add a little bit of depth and nuance to the overall flavor of the finished soup, what I like to do is a cooking method that involves roasting and steaming. So we have here some aromatics, onion and carrot. The onion adds beautiful aroma and the carrot will add a little bit of sweetness as well as beautiful bright color and we'll just place them right in the pockets that we scooped out so that while the butternut squash is steaming inside this foil envelope, the onion and carrot are also adding aroma and depth. Sage, always beautiful with squash. We'll add that to our butternut package. Fresh thyme as well. All really great warming herbs, especially during this winter season. And lastly, a little bit of rosemary. I use less rosemary because it tends to be a bit uh, overwhelming in larger quantities. And then we will simply drizzle in a little extra virgin olive oil, which will help to keep the skin and the flesh of the butternut squash moist while it's roasting so it doesn't dry out and also adds a beautiful and healthy flavor. We're going to go ahead and season with kosher salt. And then invert our squash so that everything stays within and we can safely wrap the delicate meat of the squash so it doesn't dry out during the cooking process. And we have our oven set at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. The squash will take approximately 30 to 45 minutes depending on 
thickness. Remember, ingredients are variable, so don't be intimidated by a recipe thinking that you have to necessarily follow it to the T. That's the fun part of cooking, after all. So we'll place our butternut bundles on a sheet tray lined with some foil to protect it in case any juices start to caramelize. Put it in our 375 degree oven. All right, for our next part of this beautiful butternut squash compilation, we will be doing a gourmet grilled cheese. What makes it gourmet is the use of this beautiful French brie cheese. It's a triple cream cheese from France. And the addition of some atop, sorry, hilltop apiaries honey, local honey, delicious flavor. So as you can see, I've taken the liberty of cutting some beautiful brioche bread. And in the center, I layered uh, evenly cut slices of our brie and drizzled on some of that Hilltop Apiary's honey. We're going to use a little bit of butter in our pan to help get a golden brown crust and then finish it in the oven so the cheese melts beautifully and we're ready to go. We'll begin by adding a little bit of our butter to the pan. And we don't want it to be too hot so that the butter starts to brown before adding our grilled cheese sandwich. But we want to be able to caramelize that outside bread, make it nice golden brown and delicious. So just add in your sandwich presentation side down and gently put a little bit of pressure on it. We don't want to squish it like a smash burger, but this will ensure that we have even heat applied to the actual toast so you get a nice even golden brown. And if it looks like we're a little bit too hot, that's okay. We just lower our heat. And we can go ahead and give our cooking surface a quick wipe if any oil or butter happens to spill. Always important to clean as you go. It takes a little bit of that stress out of cooking. So we're getting really nice deep brown color. I'm going to apply a little bit additional pressure to the areas that seem to need a bit more of the color. And as soon as we're golden brown, very simply, Flip it on over and you can see we have a fairly even color, a little bit darker on the outside, but that's okay. And we're going to go ahead and finish the sandwich in the oven. That will allow the bottom side to also get some color and also cook so that the cheese is fully melted. Once again, we'll give a nice clean wipe down to our cooking surface. And once your butternut squash is ready and tender out of the oven, you could just go ahead and give it a little bit of pressure and you'll see that it's nice and soft, so we're ready to scoop out the roasted butternut squash meat into our blender. And while we have a free pan, we don't wanna to use too many dishes, we can take our pumpkin seeds and we're just gonna to simply toast them in our oven, adding a little bit of kosher salt, 
those will be a really nice topping to our soup to add a little bit of texture to the velvety, luscious bisque. You want to roast those for about five minutes just to give them that toasted flavor that we all desire. So over here in this sauce pot, I have some vegetable stock. This one I picked up at my local grocery store. However, you can very simply put together your very own vegetable stock with delicious flavor. It will also give you total control over the uh, finished product. You can catch an episode of Pursuit of Passion on my YouTube channel to find out how to make a delicious vegetable stock for our butternut bisque. It is episode 11, which is also butternut squash bisque. So now we get to unveil our beautiful roasted butternut squash. I removed the herbs because that would add uh, a bit of an off color to our finished soup. And also, honestly, the herbs were more just to infuse that added flavor, add a little more nuance to the finished dish. We will, however, blend our onion and carrots. Again, the carrots not only add sweetness, but also color to our finished soup. And you can see we just scoop out that delicious, silky, soft flesh that we will blend up with our heated vegetable stock. And I like to give and you can take a liberty to make it as smooth, as rich, or as light and liquidy as you'd like based on the amount of vegetable stock that you add. If you want it more soup-like that's more liquidy, just add more vegetable stock until it reaches the desired consistency. Personally, I prefer it more like a bisque, although it doesn't have any potato or shellfish, it's more of a use of poetic license, if you will, just based on the texture being nice and creamy and velvety. The outside skin we can discard. And then you simply ladle in your vegetable stock. I would say about a one-to-one -one ratio will get you a nice, rich, thick bisque that will be velvety smooth and delicious, but not overly thick like a puree. A little bit more kosher salt to season. And feel free to also add in some more extra virgin olive oil or even a little butter while blending for added richness and depth. So after blending, this is just about the texture that we are looking for. I like it a little bit on the thicker side. And if you need to, you can always add a little bit of your reserved vegetable stock to thin it out. Again, it's all about your preference. So I'll add a little bit to this. It looked like it may have reduced a little, which means the liquid evaporated and it became a little thicker than it was initially, which is totally fine. We'll just simply add that vegetable stock and get it to the consistency that we're looking for. We'll mix that up and get that nice and warm. In the meantime, we'll check on that grilled cheese. All right, it looks like we have beautiful We have that beautiful caramelization on the outside and the brie cheese has melted ooey gooey. I'll slice that in just a minute. And also our toasted pumpkin seeds have a beautiful toasted fragrance to them and they'll add lots of great texture to our soup.
I'll just slice that on an angle for a little nostalgic feel. And you can see we have this beautiful creamy brie cheese with the honey on the inside as well. That's going to be delightful to dunk into our butternut bisque. Once again, we'll clean our plate, our tools, as well as our board. Keep it clean. And let's go ahead and get our soup nice and warm. Now, you're probably wondering, Now, if you're like me, you probably are thinking, what would be a great way to enjoy this butternut bisque and enhance the overall experience? Well, here's a little insider secret that many people may have not heard of. So we're going to pair our butternut bisque with a sparkling rosé. This is Lucien Albrecht, and it is a cremant the Alsace. So what Cremant wines are, they're essentially made in the Champagne method, but just because they don't come from the actual region of Champagne, they don't become designated as Champagne. But I am telling you, when you're talking about value for your dollar, not to mention quality that reaches the level of a real Champagne from the region, Cremants are a absolute go-to. So we'll go ahead and open this up and get the floral notes. Not to mention the fruit notes within the Cremant, it being a Brut Rosé, will actually add a lovely fruit background to our bisque, which is overall fairly rich not to mention the brie cheese, also rich, but it will also pair well with our gourmet grilled cheese. So it's a really lovely way to bridge all the elements of this preparation. Cheers. So I think it's about time that we can plate up our butternut bisque. Just make sure it's nice and hot. Going to add a touch more of our warmed vegetable stock. And you can see that beautiful consistency from blending it thoroughly. Obviously, I wanted to reserve you the dreaded noise of the blender. So I went ahead and took care of that behind the scenes. All right, go ahead and select yourself a beautiful bowl to plate your butternut bisque. And again, the consistency is all up to you. However you want to enjoy it is up to you, I think. Giving it a little more viscosity gives you a certain lusciousness that elevates the butternut bisque experience. Not to mention, we also want to highlight all of the beautiful nuances that we worked hard to create during the cooking process. The steaming of the onion, the carrot, the rosemary, the sage, and the thyme. We can go ahead and top it with our toasted pumpkin seeds, which add not only texture, of course, contiguous flavor in terms of the pumpkin squash family, but also a beautiful color and vibrancy to the overall aesthetic of the finished dish. And then I like to also add in a touch more extra virgin olive oil 
Again, these are all things that are already used within the production of the dish. So repeating the use of them as a garnish just enhances all of the flavor profiles and elevates the dish to new heights. So there we have a simple butternut squash bisque, toasted pumpkin seeds, extra virgin olive oil, our gourmet grilled cheese sandwich with the triple cream brie, the hilltop apiaries honey. Well, one thing left to do, of course, is taste. And as I said, I appreciate nostalgia, so I'm going to go ahead and dip away. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. The richness of the cheese is ac accentuated by that local honey. All of the aromas of the soup really truly enhance the experience. And then you're thinking, wait a minute, what about a little acid to balance out the overall dish? Well, that's the beauty of pairing delicious wine with your meal. Where the dish would be a bit awkward and cumbersome with added acidic ingredients like a vinegar or a citrus, pairing it with a beautiful fruit forward and acidulated wine, not to mention a bubbly wine. The bubbles, believe it or not, actually do help to break through that richness. So, cheers. Perfect. The perfect palate cleanser to enhance the experience of this butternut bisque, gourmet grilled cheese. I hope I've inspired you all at home to learn from these different recipes, tips, and techniques to cook memorable meals for you and your loved ones. And you can also check out my website, www.pursuitofpassion.net, for the full recipe and a link to the video. You can also check out the links to my YouTube channel and the different episodes I have done featuring various ingredients throughout the seasons. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you Nutmeg TV for allowing me this platform to share with you at home. Please subscribe to my channel and support Nutmeg TV so that they can have more programming for you at home to learn and enjoy. Cheers. Sometimes life just happens. Don't worry. Farmington Motorsports will get you back on the road and at a fair price. From towing to tires, emissions to transmissions. Our ASC certified techs do it all. Farmington Motorsports is a family-run business. We're a Napa Auto Center and AAA approved. We work on all makes and models from preventative maintenance to major repairs. And every repair is backed by our two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty. When life happens to you, don't worry. Farmington Motorsports.